भूत भावना सो ओम मीन्स आई ऑफर माई रिस्पेक्टफुल ओबेसेंसेस ओ माई डियर लॉर्ड ओ सुप्रीम पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ गॉड हैव आई ऑफर माई रिबेसेंसेस ऑन टू यू एंड विश्वम विश्नूर means unto the supreme personality of godhead who pervades the entire universe vishvam means the creation the manifested universe and vishnu means all pervading the all pervading supreme personality of godhead so he's everywhere and in everything and he makes everything happen as the time potency huh nothing can happen without the influence of time without time everything would be static huh so every transaction every transformation every movement everything that happens in this material world is pushed by time and so time is the common factor in everything huh we have to have time because we have only three dimensions to work in so uh, time is what strings things together like krishna says everything depends on me like pearls strung on a thread uh, so the thread is time the time is what makes everything have a uh, relation to each other something happens and then something else happens and then the next thing happens and so on like that so by time we have seven stages of material manifestation huh creation gestation birth growth production of by products dwindling and death and those seven stages are due to the influence of time and everything is affected by that even this movement of the esoteric teaching is affected by that and it goes through different stages each teacher and each stage of the teaching huh has displays these seven effects because we're in time so sometimes when a religious movement or organization is founded even by the greatest spiritual master after some time it degenerates and it becomes deviated from its original purpose then a new organization or a new stage of the teaching has to be founded by the next acharya in order to keep things going in the same direction or according to the same purpose uh, that's what we see in this material world everything goes through these seven stages but in the spiritual world it's not like that because in the spiritual world there's no influence of time as a succession or a progression of stages in the spiritual world we're in eternity that means we're in a higher dimension so just like if i have let's say there's beings living on this sheet of paper huh little bugs or something and they can only move in the two dimensions of the paper well every time they they come to a boundary like one of these black marks on the paper then they can't go any further they're stopped huh they're stuck but we can go above it and and leap over it because we have access to the third dimension similarly in the spiritual world we have access to the fourth dimension or even higher dimensions so because of that we're not stuck in time if we find one of krishna's pastimes that is very pleasing and attractive to us we can relish that pastime as long as we like there's nothing pushing us nothing forcing us to go on Uh, so if we like taking prashadam we can take prashadam for a million years <laughs> never get full relish the taste of that prashadam or any of krishna's pastimes are you hungry yeah <laughs> maybe i am too that's why i'm talking about this so the next holy name is bashatkar bashat means vedic sacrifices uh, and kara means making or doing so when we make a sacrifice a vedic sacrifice what are we doing huh we're worshiping the, the lord so vashatkara means he is the objective that's why we're making the sacrifice we're making it for him huh 
It's only secondarily for us, uh, although it's very good for us. Still, the real purpose of Vedic sacrifice is to satisfy the Lord. So, Bashatkara means that uh, he is the object of worship. He's the beneficiary. He's the one who receives the benefit of doing the Vedic sacrifice. When we make an offering, whether it's an offering of food or an offering of worship, an offering of song, whatever it is, uh, it, it's directed towards him. Because why? The next holy name is Bhuta Bhavya Bhava Prabhu. Meaning that he is the supreme controller in all phases of time, past, present, and future. In the material world, we have these three dimensions of time, uh, past, present, and future. And we can't go from one to the other. Actually, we're forced to go from the past to the present to the future. Uh, we're pushed by time, by the waves of the material ocean. And we can't stop our progress in time. But he's the master of time. He's the master of all three phases of time. So even in the past the, and even in the future, what to speak of the present, he is the Supreme Lord. Uh, he's always supreme. He doesn't become supreme. You know, you hear sometimes people talk about, I will do some kind of mystic yoga process and become God. Eh. Well, Krishna doesn't need to become God. He's already God. Even when he is a little baby, huh, in the, still in the uh, crib, he had all the potencies of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And uh, as long as it was a normal situation, he acted just like a tiny baby. But when there was some need to protect his devotees, then he manifested his potency and he could very easily kill very powerful demons and so on. So this is God. He doesn't have to become God. Huh? The whole idea of becoming God is ridiculous anyway. Uh, it's a symptom of ignorance, actually. It means that one does not really understand the philosophy of the Vedas. If they think they can become God, then they don't really understand what is God. Huh? God is God eternally. He never has to become God. And if you're not God now, no way you're going to become God in the future. <laughs> because it's a constitutional state of existence. Uh, either you are God or you're not God. But we're not God. So that means we're servants of God. The real thing is when, when people talk about becoming God, it means they don't want to serve God. They don't want to serve anybody. They want people to serve them. So they concoct this whole nonsense about becoming God, just so people will offer them some tiny service. Huh? It's uh, not very smart. Because God is God in the past, present, and future. Bhuta, Bhavya, and Bhavat mean to exist, to be. Is the verb to be in Sanskrit in the past, present, and future tenses. So he is in the past, in the present, and the future, the Supreme Being. Uh, in all times and places and in all circumstances. Next is Bhuta Krit. He is the creator of the cosmic manifestation. Well, actually, Krit means maker. Uh, but he isn't exactly the direct cause. He's the indirect cause because he emanates the material elements, the unmanifest material nature called Pradhan, or the Mahat Tattva, or Brahman. All these three terms are almost synonymous, and they mean the sum total or the aggregate of the unmanifest material elements. Then he looks over them. Simply by looking over these emanated material elements, they become impregnated with all the spirit souls. And because the spirit souls desire material engagements, uh, they're trying to enjoy, basically. Therefore, the material elements become agitated and they are drawn into manifestation. So this Pradhan, 
or the sum total of all the material elements then divides into many, many universes. The universes emanate from the skin pores of Mahavishnu. Uh, just imagine how enormous Mahavishnu must be that a whole material universe can emanate uh, just from the pores of his skin. So those are coming out from him and then he goes into each one of those universes as Garbhadakshai Vishnu and he lies down on the ocean of causality, the Garbhodaka ocean, on the bed of Ananta Shesha, the snake with thousands of heads. And Lakshmi is serving his lotus feet. And from his navel, a lotus flower grows. And at the top of the, navel, of the, of the lotus flower, when it blooms, there's Lord Brahma. And then Lord Brahma, he uh, sings the material.